So grace and peace, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, literally, in all of creation on a beautiful Sunday evening. So thank you for your witness and for your attendance. It's, again, good to have everyone with us. It's a little kind of feedback. So announcement for the good of the gathered body of Christ. Continue to pray every day at noon, uh, intently, purposefully, surrounding decisions that are being made and uh, that uh, according to the psalmist that our God would give his angels guard to watch over us lest we dash our foot against a stone but in particular those who are in the medical field and uh, again those individuals who work in institutional uh, uh, services and uh, police stations and fire stations and all that goes into this so continue to pray. Check on two people every day and uh, see how they're doing. Uh, have a really good conversation, uh, especially ask them if they turned the news off and uh, started enjoying the birds and, and creation and uh, those things. Ask them if they need some uh, food. Uh, and uh, ask if you can say a prayer with them, especially say the Our Father with someone. Continue to uh, let us know through emails and phone calls regarding uh, prayer concerns and celebrations. Uh, let us know where God has been real in your life. Uh, send us an email or stop by and uh, let us know how things are going. And uh, we'll update those. They're always in the glass chapel down that way. Continue to maintain your spiritual disciplines. How important is it that we uh, or how strengthening it is uh, that we have had an opportunity to focus a little more in prayer uh, in uh, reading the word uh, and just uh, having a conversation intently uh, purposefully with our Lord and Savior each day food pantry. If you would bring your food items to the administration building or put them at the Peacock front porch where there's a buggy from Fred's and uh, bring your Society of St. Andrew change boxes uh, starting this week. Drop them off at the administration building or bring them next Sunday to worship. Uh, we don't know how worship will look next Sunday, but we're working on that. Uh, people are being encouraged to work on flood buckets. Uh, if you'd like to do that, we have some information posted on Facebook, the church page, but also we sent out an email or just call and we'll be glad to uh, put that information in the form, format to you as well. And uh, again, we're monitoring daily news and, and uh, situations uh, during this time of fluidity. Uh, but as we draw to a time of worship, I ask that you would breathe in the Holy Spirit and exhale that which is worldly and discouraging and all that goes into that. Uh, if you're responding to us during our worship service or our Lord's worship service, our opportunity to worship our Lord, um, be spiritual people. Um, we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. Uh, so respond. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. God is great. God is good. Uh, all the ways that we learn to uh, keep our priorities in a, in a working order which honors God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's what we are trying to do. And just uh, run as we will hear Peter's word to us tonight from, from the world. Uh, stay away from it. So let us center with uh, this second verse of Blessed Be the Tithe That Binds. <clears throat> Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our I'm going to invite you to sing another little song that comes out of our uh, childhood because I think it kind of fits with uh, Peter tonight. Into my heart, into my heart, 
Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in to stay. Come in today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And even though I reverse some of those words, I needed a book because this verse is not really still in my memory. Out of my heart. Out of my heart, shine out of my heart, Lord Jesus. Shine out today, shine out always. Shine out of my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. How we thank you, God, for an incredibly beautiful Sabbath. So we thank you for the opportunities that we've had to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for Sabbath rest, renewal, and strength, encouragement, hope, a sense of purpose of who we are as the people of God. And and while we're inside the wall, Lord, the world seems to miss us. But in this witness, we know your presence and your power. And that you indeed have the world in the palms of your hands. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, alive and well. How we thank you for all those opportunities that we have indeed had to draw near to him, to walk with him and talk with him. And to know that he calls us by name and he assures us that we are his own. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and we do ask, Lord, that you would be above and below and in front and behind of all those who are in harm's way, those that are dealing with sickness, those that are physically tired and exhausted, the mental anguish of, of many, Lord, who are trying to understand how to survive a time of pandemic. So we thank you for all those that are tirelessly giving of themselves and continue, Lord, to strengthen us for our journeys. May we be found faithful. In particular, we pray for those who uh, have not quite understood shelter in place and the ways that they put others in harm. We pray for those who are in time of need because of physical illness. In particular, we lift up Jean Williams too, and her medical staff and her family. Continue to be with those that mourn. Continue to be with those that are in the military. Continue to be with college students and high school students and all students who are going through a very difficult period. And continue, Lord, to find us as people of God, faithful, uh, seeking you and calling on your name, but in a very purposeful way, Lord, helping us to understand how we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So at all times, Lord, we ask that you would find us faithful in all that we say and do. And we ask that in Jesus' name and for his sake. I invite you to just uh, affirm uh, those things that are familiar. This morning we were in the 23rd Psalm and Psalm 100, but uh, a very familiar thing, so important to us. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. You should know the chorus. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant Jesus this my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. So through this world with all its snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden bears? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with me. Grant Jesus this my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. We started a study in First Peter. So we're up to chapter 2. So we're in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And uh, since I never got through it, this particular part of the lesson will be in 1 Peter chapter 2 next Sunday as well, if Jesus doesn't come for us or we go to be with him. 1 Peter chapter 2. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and slander, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, for it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So indeed. The risen Christ is with us. The risen Christ is with us indeed. Alleluia. Grace and peace. And thank you for your witness. So Peter says uh, familiar words because they hearken all the way back to the prophet Hosea. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Peter writes to those that have professed faith. 
It's a letter that represents a contrast between the old life and the new life that we find in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The good news reminds us that we are to live lives very differently from when we were not a people, when we were not under God's authority, when we were without relationship. There is a contrast in those. Most of us understand that, and uh, we get caught in that. As humans, we all know that we are defined. We are identified. And we are identified in so many different ways. It's becoming increasingly, increasingly complex and confusing for us. Uh, for instance, uh, gender. Some of us identify ourselves through ancestry or even the school that we attended. Some of us are optimists and some of us are pessimists. Some are married and some are single. Some are native and some of us are immigrants or we are aliens. Some of us are rebels, some of us are bulldogs, some of us are golden eagles, and some of us really don't get involved in any of that stuff at all. Peter writes to us about another association or an identifying mark or witness. It is the one relationship that truly identifies us, that truly defines us, who we are, whose we are. So as I said already, if we remember the prophet Hosea, Gomer, the wife of Hosea, gave birth to a son and the Lord said, call his name, not my people. Call his name, not my people, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. So Peter now writes to us in language that's familiar to us because it takes us through conversations in the New Testament, in a particular one that I'll mention in just a minute. Peter writes to us that we are birthed into this relationship. It is so powerful that we should be like newborn infants that need nourishment so that we can grow. Now, in this case, grow spiritually. Verse 3. It gives us the great qualifier of the relationship. We are to grow. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now, that verse will convict me every time I read it for the rest of my life. And it already has every time that I've read it up to this very point, even reading it and stating it again right now. And that verse should convict every person that professes faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior every time they encounter it for the rest of their life. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. What we're looking for when we talk about is where has God been real in your life? That's it. Where have we tasted that the Lord is good? I've had people say to me in the past few weeks, I didn't know I could pray this long. Thanks be to God. I didn't know that I could read this much Bible. Thanks be to God. I've had people's names come into my mind, into my heart, into my spirit that I have not thought of in years and years and years. Thanks be to God. So our time of solitude can help us to understand how we taste the realness of God or shine out of my heart or this understanding that we are strengthened, uh, we are comforted, we find renewal in a close walk with Jesus, where indeed, as a gatekeeper, he tells us we are his sheep, and he calls us by name. So it's a, it's a, it's a marvelous, convicting qualifier. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now, if you have a reference Bible, you'll note that these few verses are covering writings from the book of Psalms, the prophets Isaiah, and Hosea, as I've already mentioned. If we are birthed, we need milk. We all know this. This use of milk is not inferior to St. Paul, Paul's progression from milk to solid food in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 
But in 1 Peter, milk is both gift and grace, which is a huge, huge, these verses are huge for our people who have a Wesleyan heritage. It is a reference to the spiritual realm, not our physical flesh needs. If indeed we have tasted God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, grace, mercy, blessing, salvation, we should also be hearing this conversation that I've already alluded to with between Nicodemus and Jesus. It parallels this text. What is spiritual milk? How can I be born or birthed, as Peter is talking to us here, but with Nicodemus and Jesus, how can I be born of water and spirit? Peter quotes Isaiah 28, 16. It's a way of answering this question of what is spiritual milk? What is this being birthed? And he says, a stone, a precious cornerstone is laid for us. And in the New Testament, uh, the New International Version, I'm sorry, it cements, to use that pun as best as I can, this answer by stating yet another qualifier. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, we heard it actually in the standard, New Revised Standard Version that I read, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7. To you who believe this stone is precious. So, how do we understand handling something that is precious or something that is costly or something indeed from this that is vulnerable because when you're laying a cornerstone you're trying to build a building that is secure so how do we do this we know this we handle that which is precious carefully we handle that which is precious lovingly like an infant so Peter writes in chapter 2 to each and every one of us like newborn infants no matter how long we have been growing in grace no matter how long we have been moving towards sanctification pursuing holiness we can never forget about this costly vulnerable and again I'm adding stabilizing precious cornerstone. This transforms us from nothingness, no people, into a people of God. And Peter will go on to say a royal people, a chosen people, a royal priesthood. So on this journey, we are always drinking milk because we are always handling something holy. I'll say it one more time. On this journey, we are always drinking milk because we are always handling something holy. So I hope you're going, got milk? That was planted into each and every one of our lives about 20 years ago. He doesn't know because he wasn't born. Got milk? It's a very holy question. Not only is the stone precious, we're told it's a cornerstone. Go back to Isaiah. The cornerstone stabilizes. And this particular cornerstone, like in a building, puts the believer, the infant, those that have been journeying for a a while into this situation. The building. You can say it's a temple and it works. We're now part of it. Lots of wonderful references about building on a firm foundation. We build our lives around or connected to or upon this cornerstone. And this cornerstone is a quandary to us because we are told it is a living stone stones can't live but we are told this stone is not static nor is it stay because jesus the christ is alive this stone is not barren 
Sarah Abraham. This stone is not barren, Elizabeth Zachariah. This stone is life giving. So again, this morning, a gatekeeper who lays down his life for his sheep. So we who believe, as Peter writes, understand this stone as precious, costly, vulnerable, stabilizing, yet it is also life-giving and it is growing. It is a dynamic stone. Thanks be to God. So it is a cornerstone that provides us a very sure foundation so that something can be built. As God's people, we are built into a spiritual house and the image grows and grows and grows this building. I believe in a holy Catholic universal church. It is huge. I can't even begin to count it. In John 15, chapter 2, Jesus states that he removes every branch that bears no fruit. Now, I know that goes in a different direction because we're talking about buildings and stones and all of that and birthing children. But if the building is not growing, it is plucked. It is removed. The building is to get bigger and bigger from one living stone to the next living stone. And the reason that many of us do not see any spiritual growth is we have not discovered how to handle something that is precious. How do you handle something that is precious? So what is at issue then and now is our status in the very eyes of God versus our status in the eyes of the world. So a cornerstone, Peter writes to us, is a contrast. No people, God's people. I'm simply not sure that we are pursuing the God's people side of this. We are simply allowing ourselves to be content I know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I asked him to save me. This will always prevent us from stepping out and walking on the water. We will always stay inside the wall, on this side of the wall, because it's safe. In 2 Peter chapter 2, we are being asked to build onto or out of this cornerstone. On one side of the cornerstone is the world. On the other side of the cornerstone is this very costly, stabilizing, comforting side that we all really, really like. I do as well. And on this side of that cornerstone, I know, or at least I think I know, how to handle these things. But when I'm out on the other side, like right now, here, inside, and in the privacy of my prayer closet, I can pursue holiness. Out there? Do I really care to try? Here. I am persuaded that obedient faithfulness is required. Out there, on the other side of the stone, I may not even be accepted if I talk about it. Outside the cornerstone, Peter tells us there is malice and deceit, 
hypocrisy, envy, and slander. But inside, on the other side of this cornerstone, we are a people for God's own possession. And we really like that. I really like that aspect. And then, it will not allow me to stop there. Because it says we are sent to tell others the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into light. This cornerstone. Dynamic, living, comfortable, vulnerable, stabilizing, life-giving. I'm amazed when I spend time with this because Peter has now understood a conversation that goes back to Matthew and Jesus says, who do people say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ. And Jesus affirms him and says, you've got it, Peter. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And there's a lot of confusion on that. But here, Peter gets this cornerstone rock. And actually, we are all additions that have just been built over all these centuries. Jesus is the cornerstone. This precious, life-giving, comforting, vulnerable, because he will lay down his life for his friends. He will leave the 99 behind and go, seek that one that was lost and still say to each and every one of us I can give you water and you will never thirst again I can give you abundant life not me, I'm talking about Jesus I can give you eternal life that's quite a stone Those on the inside, all of us, when it's so comfortable in there for us, we see this cornerstone. Thanks be to God. But Peter is absolutely saying to us that out here, they really need to see this cornerstone. And they need to be invited, birthed into this building. such a great, great love for us. Jesus has such a great, great desire for us. Upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thanks be to God. Let's have a prayer together. So sometimes, Lord, it's really hard. Uh, we really do like the inside of this stone. And we thank you that in there we find strength and hope and power and comfort and peace. And yet you send us forth to be your people. So as we go our separate ways, Lord, we thank you that you would give your angels guard to keep us safe. We thank you for all the provisions of life that you've given to us. Indeed, we have much to be thankful for. Help us, Lord, to find the truth of this dynamic, living cornerstone and grow out of it so that we can be the people of God that you would have us to be in all the places that you send us. 
and we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory. And we ask that in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So go in peace, and the God of peace go with you. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you for coming.